Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 917. And if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we have a list of names, and we need a rotating list. So right now I have one here, so the record, this order starts at the first one. But if I type a 2 here, it starts at number 2. goes all the way down to Will, and then starts back at the top. If I type a 3 here, Starts at the third one, goes all the way down to Will, lists that, and then goes back up to the top, Abe and Ben. So no matter what I type here, that list will rotate, always giving someone a chance to be the first one in the list. So this is great. I coach a little league team, and this is the batting order. We want each kid to be the leadoff batter sometime during the season. So each game, I just come and type the next number, and boom, I have my batting order. All right. So how do we do this? Uh, first, we're going to have to count. And we have names, right? So I'm going to use the count. Uh, count uh, counts non-empty cells and is great for counting words. Enter, enter. So there's nine. Also for our formula, we're going to have to know, if we're starting at Daniel, we need to know that there are seven records to the end before we have to jump back to the top. So I'm going to say equals the 9 minus the 3. Now that'll give me 6. Why? Because we're starting at number 3. If we do the subtraction, it gives us the remaining one. We need that one also, so I'm going to plus 1. So there's 7 records we need to uh, show before we jump back to the top. Now we're going to use the lookup function index. And index, I simply highlight this comma, and then we need to tell it a row number, and it will look it up. So the trick is, how do we get this? How do we get a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then a 1, and then a 2, right? So And whatever I put here, this will update, right? Oh, no. All right, well, I'm actually going to do this in two steps. I can. It's easy enough to start at 3 and copy down. And then the tricky part is this last little part. So I'm going to do it in two steps. All right, I'm going to say equals and start at 3, right? I'm going to lock that using the F4 key on the row reference because I'm copying down. That'll just give me 3. And then I want to add to it an incrementer, the rows function. And I'm ultimately, I'm going to put this in C2. So I'm going to type C dollar sign 2 colon C2. What does rows do? It tells you how many rows there are. Between 2 and 2, there's 1. The fact that that's locked and that's not, it's an expandable range. So as you copy down, it'll increment the number 1, 2, 3, 4. But now, check this out. 3 plus 1 is 4. And I want to start at 3, so I subtract 1. Control Enter, and then copy this down. So that works fine up to there, but then it's not working right there. Well, I'm going to do a separate formula. I'm actually going to do two formulas and then use an if function. Uh, so no matter what, whatever I type here, I need the, the last records, the, the top row numbers down at the bottom. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to say equals rows. And actually, I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it a few times. Equals rows. Well, that's one. And I'm going to subtract the number of records to the end, F4 to lock it on the row reference. So as I copy down, it's locked. Control Enter. That's not at all what I want. When I would, but when I double click and send it down, notice there's a 1 and a 2. Well, guess what? If I use the if, those will be ignored. It'll use this one. But when it meets the criteria, it'll switch over to this one. And you can check this out if I put a 5. Sure enough, 5 to 9, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's working good. All right, I'm going to put this inside of an if. And I'm going to copy this right here, Control-CC. If you don't have Control-CC keyboard turned on to open up the clipboard, you got to go up to the clipboard, clip that, click that, and go to Options. All right. Control-CC, Escape, Control-C. All right, so now I'm going to try this again. Actually, I'm going to move these over here. And see if I can do if. And you know what? I should have. I'm going to paste that and just delete this since I'm such a bad typer. 
Here's the logical test. I'm going to say when the rows, that's the number increment, or it gives me 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. When that's greater than <clears throat> 7, that's the number of the records till the end, right? So that means we've gone past the 7 records uh, to seven records that we want, and I'm going to lock that. Well, what do I want? I want the one that gives me the 1 and the 2. It's this one. A value of 2. Otherwise, I want the one that gives me 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Close parentheses. And then this little formula construction should give me what I want. 3 and 1 little uh, column. So in essence, we're going to put this row, these, uh, this formula element that determines the row into our index. Now, I tried a few things on this, and I kind of like this one because this is the trigger. And then it either runs just this little bit or this little bit. You know, maybe someone else has a good idea too. You know, I tried the the mod, right? But then it has to run that whole thing. Now, this is the best I could come up with. Control C. Now I'm going to do my index equals index. Highlight F4 comma, and there's the row number. It's saying, hey, give me the row number. Control V. That is our number incrementer inside our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and double click and send it down. Oh, yeah, there's nothing to the left, to the right, or below, so I have to drag it. All right, so now if I change this to 5, I'm starting with Franklin going to Will, and then back to the top. I put a 1 here, boom, it starts at the top. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.